Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Hello, hello. All right, let's go ahead and continue from yesterday's conversation. So yesterday's item, flavors of geometry, will not have a KWL, so we're going straight on to the very next page. And in yesterday's conversation, we found the three different flavors of geometry. We saw Euclidean, which was very flat, spherical, which was on the surface of a ball or the globe of the Earth, and then hyperbolic, which was on really weird floppy paper, and everyone's brain kind of exploded. And we ended the conversation yesterday by talking about what happens when you add up the measures of the triangles that are drawn on these three different types of surfaces. I promised you that we would not be doing spherical or hyperbolic geometry throughout the year, and we're not really going to spend a lot of time digging into it. We might play with it once in a while, but nothing very serious. We are spending all of our time in Euclidean geometry. And in Euclidean geometry, those flat triangles, we found that when we added up the measures of those angles, we got 180 degrees. So that's what we're going to continue our conversation for on today. So go ahead and go to the very next page. Set up your notes for, um, set up your paper for notes, excuse me. You will want two full pages for notes today. So I'm going to go ahead and set up for two pages worth of notes. You do have a new lesson code, title, and objective, so make sure you get those in. As always, they are just under the La Feria logo. Today's lesson code, Chapter 4, Lesson 2, we will be looking at Triangle Angle Theorems. Not only will we be looking at them, but we will be using them to solve problems. Very much along the lines of find the value of this variable and find the missing measurements of an angle in this triangle. And the way we're going to make that happen is by being really familiar with our types of angles, classifying angles as acute or obtuse or right, and then talking about the relationships between the different angles, whether they're supplementary um, or complementary, whether they're vertical or adjacent. Okay? So that's what we are working on today. Triangle Angle Theorems is the name of today's topic. I'll give you guys just a few moments to get those copied down. And this was the last word, and angle And uh, relationships, and relationships between angles. On the, the how objective, yeah? Yes? Okay. Bless you. All right. So yesterday's conversation ended by talking about the fact that in Euclidean geometry where everything is flat, you add up the measures in a triangle and you get 180. This has a proper name. And the proper name for that statement is the triangle angle sum theorem. And we know it as you add them up and you get 180. But this is the formal way that it is written. It is formally written as the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make it larger. There you go. Let's do an example of this so that we, we can see it better. A little better? Okay. For our example, we need a triangle. And my triangle needs a name. Give me three letters. Go. A, C. C. B. 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 J. I heard a V from a different voice. All right. Here we go. So... We have these, and I'm going to try to make this as complicated as I think I could make it, really. Um, let's try that, and then this one will be... Hello, sir. Um, I guess that, 
And we'll make this one <laughs> that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Here you go. All right, so we have 10x plus 8, and then 2x minus 9, ladies, later, and 4x plus 3. And I think this is about as complicated as I could get it because I don't think this is going to give us a whole number. <laughs> it's going to give us something really weird. And the directions say, find the value of x. Okay, I could make it one step more complicated and say, when you're done finding x, find the measure of all the angles. But once you find x, you just substitute and it's done. Triangle angle sum theorem says that I could take the measurements of all of my angles, add them up together, and I would end up with 180 degrees. And so that's what I'm going to write. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to write that. And now I can substitute what I know. The measure of angle A is 10x plus 8. Measure of C is 2x minus 9. V is 4x plus 3. And all of that still equals 180 degrees. And now I'm going to do some algebra to it. So I've got some like terms to combine. Here are my x's. All my x's. <laughs> and then I have all of my numbers here. 8 minus 9 is negative 1, plus 3 is 2, two positive 2. Okay, and now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, giving me 178 over here. And I'm going to divide everything by 16, and that's totally not a whole number. And this is why I get help from people to help me make your worksheet so I get whole numbers. Uh, my calculator says that it's 11.1-ish. We'll just go with that. We'll round it to the tenth decimal place and be done with it. Makes sense, yeah? Pretty simple? The only, honestly, the only way I can make this more complicated is by giving you weirder looking uh, expressions and then maybe ask you to find the value of each angle when you're done finding the variable. Okay? All right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the whole page. I, I think some of you might still be writing the algebras. Okay. All right, well, now that we've got the triangle angle sum, and that feels really comfortable and familiar, the next two items basically fall out after you get this triangle angle sum. They're what are called corollaries. A corollary is something, usually a statement, that immediately follows after some other state, such as you're dismissed at the bell ring, and then the bell rings, the corollary is all of you stampede out the door. Okay? So corollary is a statement like that. This first one is the equiangular triangle corollary. We'll go ahead and write the whole name. And it says this. The measures of the angles of an equiangular triangle are 60 degrees. Pretty straightforward. This makes sense, doesn't it? Right? You take all the three angles, they're all the same measure, you add them together, so you get three times whatever one of them is, that equals 180, you divide by three, poof, it's 60. Um, I want to run you through the proof of that, just kind of the formal writing of what I just said, so we're going to do the proof. Proof needs to start with a triangle. I need a name for my triangle, please. J. Two more letters. C. And I heard K. All right. Jack. Jack. Given the triangle JCK is equiangular, we need to prove that the measure of angle J is 60, and the measure of angle C is 60, and the measure of angle K is 60. And once we've done all three of those things, then we have set out to prove what we wanted to prove. 
Since we're doing a proof, go ahead and set this up in our two column format. We have statements on the left and reasons on the right. We're likely going to take up the rest of the page for this, unless you're writing on one of those big pieces of paper, in which case you'll have to play with your spacing. The first thing that we always say in a proof is we state what's given and what's given is that triangle JCK is equiangular. And I'm going to abbreviate because I ran out of room. Now because it's equiangular, this means that those angles are congruent. That's our definition of the word equiangular. But because they're congruent, their measures are equal. And that's the definition of congruent. I'm using DEF to stand for the word definition so I don't have to write it out the whole way. When you're writing your formal proofs, I'm going to ask that you please write out the whole word. But for notes and things, I'm going to abbreviate for you. Okay? All right, we're almost there. The triangle angle sum allows me to say that if I add up all the measures of the angles in a triangle, I'm going to get 180. And so the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle C plus angle K is going to give me 180. But they're all equal to each other. So, come on in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign to them a little variable. I'm going to assign to them the variable y. And by assigning them all a simple vari variable like this, it makes it so much easier to deal with the algebra that's about to happen. Because dealing with algebra with measure of angle symbols is weird. So they're all y, so I can replace all of those with a y. And this is my substitution property. I'm allowed to combine like terms. That's an, uh, just an algebra thing. I need to solve for y. What do I do? Get rid of the 3 by dividing. Very nice. Division property allows me to divide two sides in an equation by the same value and not destroy my equation. And now that I have the value of y as 60, I can go back and say that the measure of all of those angles I was interested in are all 60 because they are all y. And that's me abusing my substitution property. I got to what I wanted to prove, and so my formal proof is done. Questions on the setup on that? Felt pretty good? This is like what, the third or fourth proof you've seen now, yeah? Mm -hmm. Feeling a lot better? I heard no, and I heard some, mm -hmm, I heard some, eh, sort of. Okay, so we're kind of all over the spectrum still, which is good. Which is good. It is a lot of writing. It is. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple more moments to write this down. Um, take fourth period. Thank you. All right, if you didn't get a chance to finish after lecture, my notebooks will be available so that you can open up and fill it in. Um, pretty much all the classes have had the same proof. So let's go ahead and move on to the second corollary. There we go. Second corollary, the second thing that falls out of the triangle angle sum theorem is all about the right triangle. Corollary number two right triangle corollary. And it says this. The acute angles of a right triangle
are complementary. What does complementary mean? Ninety degrees. Complementary, in case you forgot, jot it down over here. Our big takeaway was 90 degrees, and you can go back to Chapter 1, Lesson 5, Angle Relationships. I'll put a, a link to that video in case you want to rewatch it for Is whatever reason. Circle? It's uh, the little recall symbol. It's the circle with the arrows that makes you spin around. Yeah. So complementary means 90 degrees. It adds up to 90 degrees complementary. All right. So think about that for a second as I draw this setup. Here you have a triangle. One of the angles is a right angle, which means it's automatically 90 degrees. And it says that the other two, those acute angles, have to add up to 90. Yeah? Makes sense, right? You're going to have to write the proof for this one. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm just going to do examples so that you can see how it works. I need a name for my triangle, please. A. A cutie. It oh. is a very cute triangle. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and go ham on some numbers here. I am probably going to make another disastrous mess of numbers. Um, okay, I, I hope that that is going to give us a whole number. Let's try it out and see. It says that they are complementary, so the measure of angle Q plus the measure of angle T needs to equal 90 degrees because those are the acute angles. And it says that they are complementary, which we were reminded means adds to 90. Going to substitute in what we know about the measures of those angles. And then I'm going to combine my like terms. Subtracting 10 from both sides now that my like terms are collected. Dividing both sides by 10. Again, the only way I could make this more complicated is by making those expressions more complicated and then maybe asking you to find the measure of the angles when you're done. Pretty straightforward? Feeling okay? All right. Now think through, oh yeah, that totally made sense. Now how would I go about proving it? What kinds of things might I want to do? And know that you will need to prove it in the very, very near future. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like writing. All right. We have only one more theorem to go, but before we can get to this theorem, we have to do a really quick anatomy of a triangle. And if you have different colored pens or pencils or, or highlighters or things, now's your time to shine because we're going to draw a picture and we're going to put some color on it. All right, so draw a quick triangle. Does not need a name. We're going to color the inside one color. We're going to color the outside another color. And the inside we're going to call the interior. And the outside, we're going to call the exterior. And that leads us to very uninspiring things like interior angles, which are angles inside the triangle. Boring. And it also leads us to exterior angles. However, these are not just the angles outside of the triangle. And I'm going to zoom in a bit more so it's a little clearer to see. Exterior angles are formed by one side of the triangle and the extension of another side. Yeah, how? What? I'm going to wait a few moments while people copy that down. OK. 
Okay, here's how. I'm going to pick a side, and it doesn't matter which side. I guess I'm going to go with this one. This is the side I'm going to look at. Okay, so I'm looking at this side of the triangle, which means I'm going to extend one of these other two sides. I'm going to extend this one just because it looks kind of pretty. So I've extended this side of the triangle, turned it into a ray, and now I have created my exterior angle right here. That's the exterior angle. It's not the big reflex angle that finishes out my 360, but it is just a part of it. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. Yes? We need to have this anatomy that it feels okay for the theorem to make sense. Yeah? I'm glancing around and I'm getting nothing. So far, so good? So it's basically like a supplementary. Yeah, supplementary angle to this one in here. Yeah. You are not wrong, and in fact, that's going to be very powerful for you when you go and sit down to write the proof for this next thing. Okay? So hang on to that. Maybe jot a note to, the, to yourself on the side, so that way you can, you can use that. Here's the name of the final theorem for today, and one of the theorems that you will be proving in the next, oh, I'd say week or so. It's the exterior angle theorem, and it says this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I have a bit more writing space. Okay, it says this. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And I have a weird word in this theorem. Yeah, remote. That word seems out of place, right? What's a remote? The thing you control TV with. Yeah, the thing you control your TV with. Now, have, do you have any of those teachers yet that they throw a weird word like this that doesn't seem to have any place? This is a remote for the TV? What? In triangles? What? And they never stop to talk about it, and they just keep going and assume that you know it? Do you have those teachers? But do you have one of those teachers? Yeah. Yeah? And if you don't, you're blessed, but unfortunately you will probably have one. Here's my suggestion for you, for those teachers. Underline that word that made no sense. Put a question mark by it, and then over here on the left-hand side of your paper where you've left this space, put that question mark again and write that word that was kind of weird and confusing. And then after class, you go to Google, or you go to a friend who you feel is smarter than you, or you go to the teacher. And you go like, what does this word mean? And whatever they explain, as soon as it makes sense and you get it, you write it over here. And we're going to say that the word remote means far away. Because like the remote control for your TV, you're far away from your TV when you're controlling it. You're not right up next to it pushing the buttons on the side. I do. You do? You were awesome. I got forced to, I was the remote control at the house when I was ill. My sisters would bonk me on the back of the head and go, go change the TV. Oh, wait, you mean the little one on TV? On the actual oh, TV. You meant, like in front of the TV with the remote. I mean, yeah, no. It has no purpose. <laughs> like, the buttons are right there. Yeah, no, the button's actually physically on the, yeah. Or, or you're like me nowadays and you troll, I troll my husband with the remote control down the hall and I change. It's like Super Bowl, Puppy Bowl. And then I run. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like how you use the word troll. I do. All right. I am not going to write the proof for this one. This is one that you're going to have to work out on your own and struggle with it. But we will do an example so that you can get a feel of what's going on here and it'll help you lead you toward what you want to write for your proof. So I need a triangle. I need one of its sides extended. And I'd like a name for my triangle, please. A. D and one more? K. K. All right. A, D, K. All righty. And now I need a variable. 
uh, uh, huh? X? X, okay. So 5X minus 13 over here. And, oh goodness, 4X here and 74. I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, we're just throwing out numbers. Because really, this is about as convoluted as I could probably get for you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the exterior angle theorem says that the angle of the ex the measure of the exterior angle, which is this one, is equal to the sum of the remote interiors, the far away inside angles. And now I solve for x. I have x variable on both sides of the equation. I want them all on one. I think I want to put it on the left side just because the coefficient there is larger than on the right side. And if I move it to the left, I get to keep it positive. I don't have to deal with negative coefficients. So I have x minus 13 equals 74. Got to get rid of that 13. Well, this one ended up being pretty easy, actually. I, I am excited. That's That worked out. I'm okay with this. So x is 87. No. No? What did I do wrong? It's 87? Okay. Now, I don't know what that means for the angle measures. Because the next step to make it more complicated would be me telling you, find the measures of the angles. But for now, all we were told was to find the value of x, and we did that. Make sense? Okay. All right. Thank you very much.